From September 1999, Scott Trail's new Turbostar diesel trains have brought a revolution to the prestigious Edinburgh Glasgow route. Providing a 15 minute interval service, these sleek 100 mile per hour trains offer levels of comfort and passenger amenity that equal the very best in rail travel worldwide. Connecting Scotland's two largest cities, the Turbo Stars combine a stylish and aerodynamic exterior with air conditioned interiors, providing comfortable and spacious accommodation for standard and business class travellers alike. Manufactured by Ad Trans, a division of Daimler Chrysler and Derby, 24 of these three vehicle train formations will be delivered and known as Class 170 4. The design objectives have been to combine high quality appearance and accommodation with proven equipment that will deliver both innovation and reliability. So let's start by taking a look at the exterior features of these new trains. As we've already seen, they are composed of three car units. Each vehicle has a sleek monocoque body, wearing the bright new Scotrail livery of violet, terracotta, aquamarine and white. The ribbon glaze windows are filtered to reduce glare. Power operated doors are of the plug type and when closed, the entire body side is flush. This feature, combined with the sculpting of the driving cab profile, gives excellent aerodynamic characteristics important in reducing drag and increasing fuel efficiency. Each vehicle is powered by an underslung six-cylinder inline turbocharged diesel engine rated at 315 kilowatts with a maximum speed of 1900 rpm. Each diesel engine drives both axles of one bogey only via a Voith automatic gearbox, Cardan shaft and ZF final drive. Rubber primary and air and rubber secondary suspensions provide a very high ride quality. This is the first of two driving vehicles. It has business class accommodation as well as standard and also features two wheelchair spaces and a toilet facility for the disabled. Like all toilets on the Class 170-4 Turbostar, it has an exterior underslung retention tank. A wheelchair ramp is provided and is housed adjacent to the emergency equipment cupboard. Let's take a look at the exterior equipment on this vehicle, starting on the driver's side, cab end. Adjacent to the cab door is the cab access lever, permitting access to the cab, irrespective of whether the unit is powered or unpowered. To the rear of the leading bogey is the fuel tank filler coupling and gauge, while further back in the centre of the car, we find the shore supply sockets, the water heater return valve, the manual fire bottle discharge, the local engine stop button, the header tank level gauge, the hydrostatic tank level gauge, and the header tank filler. On the car side panel is a passenger saloon access lever, which can be used to open one set of doors in emergency again irrespective of whether or not the unit is powered. Just ahead of the rear bogey is the test button for the automatic multi-shot sanding equipment. On the other side of this vehicle we find local engine stop and start buttons together with an engine isolation switch, manual fire bottle discharge, the air dryer humidity indicator, a raft containing test points and isolation cocks, the battery isolation switch and shore supply sockets and a fuel tank filler and level gauge. Cab access and passenger saloon access levers are also located on the body panels on this side. The centre car is a powered saloon vehicle. It has standard accommodation only and is not provided with a toilet. The exterior equipment location on this vehicle is identical to that on the driving vehicles except, of course, that there is no cab access lever or toilet retention tank. The third car is another driving vehicle, providing both business and standard accommodation, but in this case with a regular toilet only. Each three-car Turbostar unit is fitted with intermediate gangways, but driving cab ends are not gangwayed. The driving cab ends of the three-car unit are equipped with a BSI automatic coupler, which combines both air and electrical connections. Intermediate couplings within the unit are of a semi-permanent type and are encased within the gangway. 
The main reservoir flexible pipe connections between vehicles are also housed within the gangway, but are provided with external isolating cocks in the usual way. Electrical control jumpers and plugged receptacles are attached to the intermediate headstocks. The driving cab has been designed to provide an ideal working environment for the driver, featuring air conditioning, excellent forward vision and ergonomic layout of the seat, controls and instrumentation. Various drivers actually participated in the cab design. The semicircular sculpted driving console has been carefully thought out so that every control and communication function is at the driver's fingertips and every monitoring function within the forward field of vision. The combined power and brake controller is operated by the left hand. It provides seven steps of power graduation, three steps of service braking and an enhanced emergency braking position. A small thumb operated button on the end of the controller handle provides step one holdover braking for hill starts. To the left of the power and brake controller is the four position drive mode selector which is unlocked from a standard master key switch. The train braking system is a three step energized to release electro-pneumatic air brake which actuates disc brakes on each axle. The emergency position affords an enhanced braking rate equivalent to 12% G. To obviate the dangers arising from low wheel rail adhesion, the latest wheel side protection equipment is supplemented by the provision of automatic multi-shot sanding. This is only active, however, in the step three and emergency braking positions. A spring applied parking brake operates on each axle. To the driver's left on the sidewall above the console is the notice board panel which also encompasses the heating, lighting and fan switches. The radio electronic token block operations panel can be fitted here if required. Below, the left side of the driving console houses the local and train fault indicator panels. The local fault indicator panel has six fault indicator lights which are red when illuminated. To the left is the signal buzzer button and below the vigilance warning buzzer. The train fault indicator panel houses the all engine stop and start buttons, the train fault and no fault indicators, the AWS sunflower and horn, the door controls, the interlock indicator and key switch and the WSP active indicator. At the centre of the console is the driver's instrument panel which houses the speedometer, digital clock and duplex air gauge. The instrument panel also incorporates the DRA, the AWS reset button, the PASCOM alarm indicator, the safety systems isolated indicator and the door interlock lost indicator. In other words, all the vital safety indications are in the driver's forward field of vision. The driver's desk switch panel contains the right hand side door buttons, the hazard warning button, couple and uncouple buttons as well as the horn control and windscreen wash and wipe. The right hand side of the console houses the communications panel which includes a passenger information system, keypad and display. This comprehensive visual display system supplies the destination information to the dot matrix display on the front and rear of the train as well as full journey details and product messages to the interior carriage displays. Once the driver has correctly entered the train ID and personal ID, the entering of a root code will activate the system, which then operates automatically. In addition to messages set up by the driver, a small internal aerial above the window on the second man side can receive messages transmitted by the control centre. These messages will appear on the passenger saloon displays. Quite apart from providing invaluable travel information to all passengers, the system combined with the PA is of particular benefit to the disabled in that it provides both visual and audible announcements. On the right hand cab side wall is a panel housing eight key operated safety systems isolation switches. On the cab back wall is a panel housing control supply MCBs and a sealed track circuit actuator isolation switch. The DSD is a floor mounted treadle alongside which is the yellow foot operated PASCOM alarm override switch. 
At floor level, adjacent to each side door, is a cab light switch for ground level operation. Each side door is provided with a key operated isolation switch, which may be used to lock the door out of use. The cool and quiet ambience of the cab provides a quality environment, conducive to the concentrated demands of the driver's job. The saloon interiors have been designed for optimum passenger comfort and safety. The spacious seating is a combination of aircraft style and face-to-face -face bays with tables. The diffused overhead lighting provides a good level of illumination while being restful to the eyes, and the windows are tinted to reduce harsh glare while maintaining good visibility. The interior decor gives a modern and relaxed appearance. Ample space is provided for passengers' hand luggage, in special luggage bays adjacent to the door vestibules, above the seating and longitudinal shelving, and for items like briefcases, there are small racks at the seat sides. Each car has two spacious door vestibules, allowing ease of entry or exit from the train. The sliding plug doors are electrically operated and have passenger open and close buttons on the inside and open buttons on the outside. At floor level by each door leaf, a spotlight is fitted to give enhanced safety lighting of the immediate door and step area. Internal emergency egress handles are located in the left-hand door pod of each set of doors, while the right-hand door pod houses the PASCOM button and microphone loudspeaker, known as emergency talkback unit. These emergency talkback units, two of which are also fitted in the toilet for the disabled, have an alarm button to alert the driver. The train brakes will be applied five seconds after the button is pressed, but the driver may delay any application by operating the PASCOM override. The driver will activate the emergency talkback unit where the alarm button has been pressed, enabling the passenger to speak. Once the driver has received and understood the passenger's message, the unit is switched to loudspeaker mode to enable the driver to reply and give emergency instructions. The emergency egress has some enhanced safety features. If the glass is broken and the door release handle pulled while the train is travelling at more than 6 miles per hour, the brakes will apply after an interval of 5 seconds. However, to prevent dangerous unauthorised evacuation of the train, the driver may delay the onset of a brake application by depressing the PASCOM override foot button. So long as this button remains pressed, the train can continue to a position of safety. However, after 90 seconds have elapsed, or if the speed has fallen below 3 miles per hour, the door leaves will unlock and unplug. An audible hustle alarm sounds at the door in question, which can now be pulled open by hand. A defective door can be locked out of service. Both door leaves must be closed manually, but if the electric door motor prevents manual closure, it will need to be isolated by means of the door isolation switch. Once the door is closed, it can be locked with a carriage key. The out-of-service sign will illuminate. At each doorway, a cupboard in the left side door pod contains the conductor's door control panel with key switch and signal buzzer. In the right hand door pod is the PA panel with conductor's handset. Each three-car unit has a total of 18 business class seats, nine in each business class saloon at the outer cab ends of each driving vehicle. The wider seat dimensions mean that business class seating is arranged in a two-in-one configuration and two-thirds of the seating is at tables, while the remaining third is aircraft style. All business class seats are reclining and provided with reading lamps and power points for laptop computers and mobile phone charging. The driving vehicle with a regular toilet has 53 standard seats and four compact tip-up seats. The driving vehicle with the toilet for the disabled has 47 standard class seats, mostly in two and two configuration, but also includes four compact tip-up seats, five saloon folding seats, and space for two wheelchairs. This highly versatile fold-away seating makes maximum use of the space available while affording excellent facilities for the disabled, especially wheelchair passengers. The toilet for the disabled in this vehicle features an extra-wide power-operated sliding door to permit easy wheelchair access. 
Inside the spacious cubicle, the surfaces, supports and hand grabs meet the highest standards of safety for the convenience of disabled passengers. Baby changing facilities are also provided. As we've already seen, there are two emergency PASCOM units fitted in this toilet. The second is close to floor level and thus may be operated by a passenger from the WC or after a fall. The toilets can be locked out of use with a carriage key and when this is done, the external illuminated sign will display Toilet Out of Use. The middle vehicle of the three-car unit is equipped with 84 standard seats, including two folding seats and four compact tip-up seats. Although this car has no toilet facility, the wide and convenient gangways permit access to the toilets in the adjacent cars. The directions are clearly signed. All passenger information signing throughout the train includes the text in Braille for the convenience of blind or partially sighted people. The interconnecting gangways are soundproofed and protected against drafts by power-operated sliding glass doors. Services operated by the TurboStars will be enhanced by the provision of a snacks and hot and cold beverage trolley service. The interior of the train has been specially designed to facilitate the smooth and easy movement of the purpose-built catering trolley. Those seats not facing a table are provided with a fold-away tray attached to the seat back in front. Each vehicle has an interior body end cupboard containing a panel of 52 MCBs, a fault indication panel with three isolation switches, air conditioning control, wheel side protection equipment, and the audio communications unit. The body end cupboards in the driving vehicles also house the on-train data recorders. The body end cupboard in the motor open standard contains an additional five MCBs and the fire alarm test and isolation switch. Providing accommodation for travellers with cycles has always been a Scotrail priority and the new Turbostar is no exception. Once again, the versatile space afforded in the driving vehicle with the toilet for the disabled means that by simply removing one of the tables, two cycles can be loaded and secured for the journey. The 24 new trains will be maintained at Edinburgh's Haymarket Maintenance Depot. Although primarily designed to operate as a dedicated fleet, the Turbostar units with their nose-end BSI autocouplers can be operated in multiple with diesel units of classes 14X and 15X in the Scotrail fleet. However, some of the more advanced features of the Turbostars, such as the public information system, will not operate on the older trains. The Class 170-4 Turbostar incorporates all the latest state-of-the-art safety systems, including on-train data recorders, enhanced emergency braking, multi-shot automatic sanding, and the driver reminder appliance. The new trains are also TPWS compliant and will be fitted in time for rail track implementation. The driving cabs can also be fitted with radio electronic token block equipment which will enable the Turbostar to operate over the far north and west highland lines if required in the future. ScotRail's new trains herald a significant step forward in luxury rail travel. Designed to provide a high-performance, high-speed service over non-electrified routes, the Turbostars will revolutionise ScotRail's into urban services. Introduction on the flagship Edinburgh Glasgow service in September 1999 running every 15 minutes between the two cities will double the previous service frequency. Turbostar introduction to the Edinburgh Aberdeen route follows later in the year and the Glasgow Aberdeen route in the year 2000, completing Turbostar operation on the Golden Triangle. The Turbostar is Scotland's clean burn, fuel efficient, environmentally friendly transportation system for the new millennium. We know you'll enjoy it.